All right, guys, if you made it past the last video, this is going to be a proof of the root mean square. Uh, I just want to let you guys know we're not going to really, I'm not going to explain uh, peak values versus RMS values in this because I did that in the last video. This is only going to be a proof uh, just to show you where, in the last video, that root mean square, or 1 over square root of 2, approximately 0 0.707, where this number actually comes from, because I kind of pulled this out of uh, thin air on the last video, and I said I promised I would prove this, so let's go ahead and take a look at it. So assuming uh, you know some calculus, let's go ahead and analyze a, a sinusoidal function, and let's imagine this as being our sine wave, right? And so for right now, let's just assume it has, let's just assume its amplitude is 1, okay? I'm not going to really, uh, we're not going to care about the actual voltage yet. We'll look at that in the end when we piece this all together. So let's just assume this is just your average sine wave, right? And if you know a little bit about sine waves, you'll know that it has, here we'll just look at some of these actual angles. So here it's at 0 degrees, here it's at 180, right? 180 or we'll also call this pi, right? We like to use radians in calculus. And this here is 360 degrees. This is a full cycle, right? And this is 2 pi. And after this point, it would repeat itself, right? So this is the actual AC waveform. And so we know it peaks at a value of 1, so that is the peak, right? And um, we want to find the RMS value of this waveform. So what is the RMS? So the RMS is the root of the mean uh, of the square values. So what that really means is if I took the uh, actual values of the sine wave, first off, let me, let's go ahead. I want to, just before I, I do this, I want to show you guys that I'm really only going to start looking at this first half of the cycle. We're only going to look at the positive sine wave because the negative half of the sine wave is really just the same thing. So when we say uh, RMS, RMS, that RMS voltage is 0.707, times uh, its peak and we're really we only need to analyze half the waveform to look at it the the other half of the waveform is going to be exactly the same but flipped it's going to be opposite polarity all right guys so let's go ahead and take a look at that so if i if i really kind of draw this waveform out big right and so this is our sine wave now and so this is zero and this is pi and so what the rms is the rms r m s it is the actual function squared. So we're going to square each value in here. Again, this peaks at 1. But it's the values of this function squared. Let's say the angle is theta, right? So this is the actual uh, angle of our waveform. So this could be anywhere from 0 degrees up to 360 degrees. In this case, on the positive half of the cycle of our AC cycle, it's going to be anywhere from 0 uh, to 180, right? Or 0 to pi, right? So that's this is 0 degrees and this is 180 degrees into the cycle. And really, sine, sine of theta will really tell us, this will tell us the exact value of any voltage or any current on this actual sinusoidal waveform. So this function right here, if we look at any angle, any part of the sine wave, it's going to tell us that value right here, right here, right here, at any instantaneous point, right? I'm sure you guys already know this. You've taken a calculus class. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this sine value, and I want to square it. I'm going to square it, right? And then I want to find the mean or the average of all of these values in this whole waveform, okay? So I want to find the average of the squares of these voltages from here to here, okay? So that is where the, the mean part comes in. And so to do that, what I really need to do is I'm gonna take all these values, I'm gonna square them, and I'm gonna sum them up. And that's really what an integral is, right? So I'm gonna go from zero, and I'm gonna go up to pi. So those are my bounds. So I'm gonna analyze this waveform, I'm gonna add up all these values. I'm gonna square all these values first, and I'm gonna add them all up from zero to pi. And that is what an integral really is, right? And then, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the average of that. And what happens when you take the average? You just divide it, right? We're just going to divide it by the length of this by the length of this waveform. Sorry, guys, my camera battery died. But so, anyways, to actually find the average, we're going to add up all these values, right? Uh, and then we're going to divide it by the the length of this or the time, right? So this is we, if the time, if you will, is from zero to pi, right? So this is kind of the the average. So that's where this mean part comes in. So the square is we're going to square all these values. The the mean is we're going to add them all up and we're going to divide it by how many there are, right? That's kind of like the average or the mean. That's what it means. And then in the end, we're going to take the square root of this whole thing. Uh, and so let's go ahead and do that analytically and let's see what we get. 
All right, guys, so I'm gonna have to kind of write a little small on this. And also, I'm gonna kind of leave off my uh, square root till the end, just because it looks a little bit nicer. So, uh, just so you guys know, that's where my square root is at. So we're gonna integrate from zero to pi, and that is sine squared theta, right? We're squaring all of our values, adding them up, and taking the average of it. In the end, we take the square root. Here we go, so let's go ahead and integrate this. Uh, so the integral of sine squared, can't really take the integral of sine squared, so we're gonna have to use a power reducing formula on this. So if we go one over pi, let's keep our integral from zero to pi, and you can break sine into, uh, with a power reducing formula, we can take it down into one minus cosine two theta over two, right? That's a power reducing formula. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this two and I'm just gonna put it out here just so you guys see that. So I'm gonna have one over two pi uh, times the integral from zero to pi of one minus cosine of two theta, all right? And uh, of course, I should have a d theta here and a d theta here, d theta here. That was wrong of me. I should definitely have a d theta everywhere. So. Uh, let's go ahead and keep going on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull my constant out, 1 over 2 pi. And I want to do these integrations right here because we can integrate all these. So uh, the integral, so it's going to be times this whole thing. So we need our bracket. The integral of 1 with respect to theta is theta. The integral of cosine of uh, negative cosine of 2, uh, two theta. And uh, if you know the integral of... Uh, cosine is sine. So the integral of negative cosine is negative sine, so nine minus sine of uh, 2 theta, and you have to use the chain rule here, right? Uh, and that's going to give you a 2 on the bottom. And then we're still going from 0 to, to pi. Alright guys, so let's go ahead and evaluate this thing. So I have 1 over 2 pi, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say this is pi minus zero, right? Minus, and the sine of two pi, if I plug in my pi here, sine of two pi is gonna be zero, right? The sine of two pi is zero, so minus zero. And then the sine of zero, if I subtract that, the sine of zero is zero again. So really, all we have is uh, this whole thing, this, this is zero, right? And this is zero. So in here, we just have a pi, so we end up with this being equal to, hopefully you can see this, 1 over 2 pi times pi, and these pi's cancel out. And remember, like I said, I was going to leave off that square root to the end. Here we have 1 half, and I'm going to put my square root on there, and, oh, you guys can't see that. There it is, one, uh, the square root of 1 half, which is 1 over the square root of 2, right? If I just show you guys that, just so you guys... Don't freak out. I'm hoping if you know calculus, you can figure this one out, but we can break this up into the square root of 1 over the square root of 2, and that gives us 1 over the square root of 2, which is uh, approximately uh, 0.707, and that is where we get our RMS. So just so you guys know, one more time, I just want to go back to the very beginning and just show you guys where the heck did that go. All right, guys, so I just want to show you guys one more time at the very beginning. Remember, I made that amplitude of that of that wave 1. And so if, let's just say, it was something we're familiar with, like, like uh, with the RMS value of RMS value of 120 VAC, right? The peak value of 120 volt uh, RMS sine wave is 170. So if we took 170, we analyze this uh, waveform with an amplitude of 1, and we get 0 0.707. That way we can apply it to any waveform. Uh, and so if we do 170 times our point zero point seven oh seven, this gives us the RMS value for this waveform, where this right here, this value here, represents our peak, and this is the RMS multiplier that we multiply by to get RMS. And you'd get about 120 volts, right? And that is where the RMS value comes from. And so really, again, it is all these instantaneous, instantaneous values of our voltage or our current or whatever kind of waveform we're looking at, all these instantaneous values squared, then we find the average of those squares. So we have to sum them all up and divide it by that, that length there, that zero to pi, this weight, this, the time frame of this waveform that we're analyzing. And then what I do is I take the square root of that, and that is the root mean square.